Hey there. So today we are going to discuss about a condition in which our RBCs increases in volume in our body. This condition is referred to as polycythemia and simply put it means poly meaning many, cyte meaning cells and hemia which means blood. Now no doubt the other blood cells also increases but the elevated levels of RBCs predominates the condition. We already know that there are three types of blood cells in our body, namely the RBCs called as erythrocytes, the WBCs called as leukocytes and the platelet. And all of these three cells have varied functions. Now the RBCs are non-nucleated cells of the blood whose primary function is to carry oxygen from lungs to the cells and to carry carbon dioxide from cells to the lungs. It is these cells that gives blood its red color because of its iron binding capacity required for its functioning. And when the RBC levels drop, they lead to anemia. In polycythemia, the RBCs increases in number. This can occur due to two major reasons. First in which the blood cells producing part of our body works abnormally to produce a lot of these blood cells, including the RBCs. Or secondly, due to the overproduction of the hormone erythropoietin which stimulates red blood cell production. Thus, polycythemia are further classified into primary and secondary polycythemia. Primary polycythemia or as popularly called as the polycythemia vera is a condition in which the bone marrow that is responsible for production of RBCs produces it in large number without any specific reasons. Since bone marrow is also responsible for production of other blood cells, the WBCs and the platelets will also be elevated but not as much as you may find the RBCs. Secondary polycythemia occurs due to reduced amount of oxygenation, which causes excessive production of erythropoietin. Causes of secondary polycythemia includes heavy cigarette smoking, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, cyanotic heart disease, living in high altitudes and renal carcinomas. The elevation in the RBC level in the blood makes the blood thick and as you know thick blood is not going to be able to move around as swiftly as it normally would. Thus the flow rate of blood decreases. The person with this lower blood flow have the tendency to form clots which is one of the biggest problem in this condition. Blood clots are dangerous as they can block the blood supply to a particular organ or extremity causing ischemia. Now this reason blood cells may not remain elevated forever cause after some years the bone marrow is going to get filled with scars and won't be able to make enough blood cells to meet the body's demand. This is a condition called as the burnt out or spent phase. This letter on evolves into myelofibrosis, myeloid dysplastic syndrome or acute myeloid leukemia. The spleen also becomes enlarged as the spleen tries to clear a greater number of blood cells than normal in this condition. Polycythemia normally occurs in the older age group and with treatment the survival exits 10 years. Patients with polycythemia have a ruddy complexion, headache, dizziness, tinnitus, fatigue and paresthesias which occurs as a result of increased blood volume while the thickened blood causes chest pain, breathing difficulty, inflammation and blockage of veins and pain near the blocked vessels. Patient suffers from hypertension due to the increased viscosity of blood and also develops pruritis that is itching all over the body as the increased WBCs, especially the basophils, releases mast cells which releases histamine causing the itch. The increased uric acid formed due to the increased turnover of RBCs causes gout 
and kidney stones. Gout is inflammation of the joint due to deposition of uric acid. Patient also develops something called as the erythromyalgia, which is a burning sensation felt by the patient in the fingers and toes. Patients with polycythemia have an increased risk of clotting as well as the bleeding. Now the reason for clotting may be well understood given the condition of thickened, slowed blood flow with increased blood cells. But bleeding occurs because the increased platelets are immature and non-functional. Thus, bleeding can occur and is usually manifested as nosebleed, GI bleed, hematuria, intracranial hemorrhage. Clotting can cause stroke, myocardial infarctions and peripheral vascular disease. Coming to the treatment of the problem, it is usually treated with phlebotomy. In this, the vein is punctured usually with a cannula to remove blood so as to reduce the thickness of the blood. So 500 ml around blood is removed once or twice weekly to reduce the patient's iron stores to prevent overproduction of RBCs. Chemotherapeutic agents like hydroxyurea can be used to suppress the marrow functions, but it comes with the risk of causing leukemia. Anagrelide is another drug which inhibits platelet aggregation, thus preventing clot formation. Interferon alpha-2b is given to overcome pruritus and allopurinol works better for treating gout. For treatment of secondary polycythemia, the main aim will be to treat the primary cause which is why the polycythemia occurred in the first place. The remaining treatment is the same. So this is all for polycythemia. I hope you understood the lecture better. Stay tuned to Layman's Medicine and please do subscribe to my channel.